so I, I was very sure that I'll be joining either PSU or IIT Gandhi Nagar, not the other one. That consulting yeah, yeah, firm, yeah. yeah. So I, I, I was like, okay, I will be joining uh, that particular piece. But the, it happened that the, their offer letter, it, it was taking time uh, to come, right? At that time, I decided, okay, let me join IIT Gandhi Nagar and then I will decide. So because without experiencing uh, the thing, if I directly uh, take one decision, right? So it, it won't be a right decision to do. In PMRF, uh, the stipend is uh, for the first two years, it is 70,000. Uh, for the third year, it is 75,000. And for the last uh, two years, it is 80,000 per month. Hey everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So today we have Kailash with us. So he is currently a design engineer at ARM and prior to this he is a PMRF fellow at IIT Gandhinagar. So yeah Kailash please introduce yourself. Okay yeah thank Anish for inviting me. So I think you have introduced right. So um, I'm currently a design engineer at ARM and uh, prior to that i, I was uh, a phd candidate at iit gandhinagar and prime minister fellowship was uh, one of the fellowship i got uh, i did my btech from uh, nit arunachal pradesh uh, i i did my btech in btech uh, electronics and communication engineering and after that i joined uh, phd directly so i think that's all yeah, yeah. So, like, uh, I'm very curious, like, why did you join PhD directly? Like, many students, like, they give GATE and they want to pursue MTech. From there, they want to see if their passion is on the research side or they want to move to the corporate side. But, uh, like, you were so sure that you wanted to do a research or, like, what was the reason behind that? Okay, yeah, it's, it's a long story. Okay, let me tell you in short. So, uh, in my BTEC, I did my uh, internship at IIT Kanpur in my BTEC third year, right? So, I was working with Professor Yogi Singh Chauhan. Uh, one of the prominent faculty in device physics and uh, actually at that time uh, i got to know about this uh, this phd program uh, which happens uh, directly after btech so it happens in iit kanpur also right and he informed me and all the interns we were there so he informed us about that so uh, in the seventh semester flyer came from iit gandhinagar uh, to our nit that okay people are uh, they are actually hiring uh, direct phd students uh, there are a couple of things about uh, this particular thing. So this interview happens in seven, seven semester, unlike the PhD interview, which happens in eight semester or after eight semester for all the different IITs. Uh, in IIT Gandhinagar, it's a separate one. So uh, because it was a placement season, so I applied, right? So okay. It, okay. it happened like that. Uh, so I, I went to IIT Gandhinagar, given the interview couple of rounds it, it happened and uh, I think after one month uh, I got a call uh, from the uh, IIT Gandhinagar that I have been selected uh, in the interview. So uh, apart from that actually I had uh, two job offers so one was uh, for a consultant I think business technology analyst was the post in one of the reputed companies and one job was from a PSU. Uh, so I, I had okay. a PSU job, uh, that too from Ghaziabad, right? So, uh, so what happened? Um, I think uh, the the joining of uh, this. Uh, so I, I was very sure that I'll be joining either PSU or IIT Gandhi Nagar, not uh, uh, the other one. That consulting yeah, yeah, firm, yeah. yeah. So I, I was like, okay, I will be joining uh, that particular piece. But the, it happened that the, their offer letter it it was taking time uh, to come, right? And uh, at that time, I decided, okay, let me join IIT Gandhinagar and then I will decide on that. So because without experiencing uh, the thing, if I directly uh, take one decision, right, so it, it won't be a right decision to do. And because I had that option that, okay, because the joining is not there of that particular company. So I, I, I was just uh, exploring, exploring actually at that time. And uh, when I went into the, the nano DC lab, we call it at IIT Gandhinagar, uh, the people uh, or the work which is going on over there at the, at the campus, it is really amazing, right? So I have never experienced that kind of uh, research things and everything uh, which was going at IIT. People were working on a lot of different topics, right? Um, LDMOS, nano sheet fades, uh, you might heard about this two nanometer one. People were working on those topics down the line or before five years 
on those topics and the kind of discussion uh, we used to have over there i, I really found uh, very very interesting and uh, and then i took a decision that okay i wrote a mail to the company that okay i will not be joining and i'll be continuing the phd so it was not like that uh, i i wanted to do phd but because of my experience at iit gandhinagar my my scenario has changed right so that is the reason i i got into iit gandhinagar and there was one uh, other benefit uh, which iit gandhinagar was giving me was uh, they had this monetary benefit of extra 10000 rupees they were providing because of this uh, the phd program by which i went into this is called a start early phd program so yeah that's how i so in gen- yeah. uh, in general in a pmrf scheme what does the stipend like i heard you get some stipend right for in the pmrf okay scheme. so uh, let me tell you uh, the thing so i i was not uh, a pmrf directly so when i joined phd okay. uh, at that time i was not a pmrf so i i joined as a start early phd and at that time uh, the nominal phd stipend was 25000 and i was getting 35000 because of the start early scheme currently the nominal phd stipend is 37 and if you are a start early phd you'll be getting 47000 per month so okay. that's how it is okay that, yeah that. still it's a good amount right uh, yeah it's a good amount in pmrf uh, the stipend is uh, for the first two years it is 70000 uh, for the third year it is 75000 and for the last uh, two years it is 80000 per month along with that you will get an annual contingency grant of 2 lakh rupees uh, every year for uh, traveling to the conferences and for lot other things so i uh, have applied the pmrf in my uh, second year that was the time when the the way they used to take pmrf interview has changed and i thought that okay this is and that was the on- only opportunity i had because after that i was not eligible to apply so i thought okay let's apply that and yeah luckily i got so like uh, uh, a person who has done their btech and he wants to like apply in the pmrs scheme can he apply in that or like is there any other procedure for okay, it okay so now the procedure is different earlier what used to happen uh, you can directly give an interview of a pmrf right so suppose iit kanpur is organizing the pmrf interview for electrical engineering you used to give a uh, a uh, interview at iit kanpur and then uh, if you get selected you can choose the iit or iic you want to uh, go but now so uh, yeah. like there isn't anything related to gate here nothing related to the gate directly like you also don't choose your projects or something you don't choose your professors right now you just give some interview to the institution and after that you get to choose your projects all those things is uh, it? or it's different no so uh, the thing is uh, l- let me uh, explain so whatever i have said now that was uh, the earlier way in 2020 when i have applied the, the procedure has changed so now how okay. the pmrf uh, scheme works is you get into a pmrf granting institution first so uh, the, this iit is all the iits iiscr iisc and uh, all the institute which comes under top 10 of nirf are a pmrf granting institution so you can get into any of this pmrf granting institution at as a regular phd student right now there are two modes by which you can apply pmrf after that so you are not sure that you'll be getting a pmrf even after getting the admission at any of this institute after that you will apply so one is the direct phd when as soon as you give the interview and after the following two or three months you can apply for a direct phd or direct entry pmrf uh, how does it work so on the basis of your academic profile research proposal uh, which you propose right and uh, the potential supervisor who have been assigned uh, to you or the person who has who has actually selected you right along um, collaborating with that person uh, you'll be writing that uh, that sop uh, i think for the direct entry the o- sop is the only thing that is required and uh, it will actually go to three or four tier selection process okay i will tell you about the selection process later on so that's the first way the second way is uh, is the lateral entry scheme by which i have applied right in that what uh, we do is uh, you start uh, doing courses at, at uh, the pmrf granting institution and uh, you do couple of uh, research work right if you are a btech directly after btech so you have two years to apply for a lateral entry and two attempts you can apply if you are a mtech you can apply for uh, or there is only one year in which you can apply and uh, again you have two attempts uh, for that so uh, 
based on what you have done at IIT and what you have done earlier, you will be uh, uh, applying for the lateral entry. And now how the procedure works. So it's a multi-tier process. So first what happens, the guide will actually select uh, one or two students uh, who who he or she thinks that okay this person is capable of getting the grant so that that will be selected and then the department will ask uh, the nomination from the all the all the guide or the faculty uh, supervisor and then it will go to a department every department will now select few of them right based on whatever application they have received and then it will go to the pmro granting institution the institute in our, our case it is iit gandhi nagar's academic body right academic body will uh, receive all the application from all the departments right and then they will again verify and whatever the number of uh, seats or nomination that has been allotted to iit gandhinagar say 12 nomination if it is allotted they will select the top 12 of them and they will send this to uh, whoever whichever uh, IIT or IISC that is coordinating PMRF that year for that particular department, they will send. Okay. And then they will select after that, whatever the number of seed that has been allotted that to that particular PMRF granting institution. For instance, for IIT Gandhinagar, um, in our, when we got selected, it was, I think, four or five seats. We got six seats. And this number of seats have been actually decided based on their NIRF ranking and how many PhD students they have. So I think 2% or 1.5% of uh, uh, total number of PhD students can be PMRF at that particular year. So, and uh, if they think that, okay, the application which they receive is worthy enough, then they will select the, or they will actually uh, nominate for the PMRF final. And after that, you will receive a notification that you have been selected, right? So this is how I think four or five tire process now happens, which is good as compared to the earlier process where you just give one interview and the fate was decided, okay. right? So Yeah, everything depends on the interview. Exactly. exactly. Okay. So, uh, like, uh, uh, what are the perks and benefits of this? Apart from the stipend, stipend, we already know, like you already told us the stipend. What are the different things you get when you are selected for the PMRF scheme? Okay, PMRF is a very special scheme, right? So, monetary benefit is the is the best benefit which you have but <laughs> apart from that you get this additional contingency grant of two lakh rupees per year and uh, you can use this uh, contingency uh, as per year purpose right so if you want to attend conferences many a times what happens people don't submit uh, uh, paper to good quality conferences because they have to travel and to travel and to publish over there you need money right pmrf allows you to submit to those conferences. For instance, in my case, I have been submitting to DAC, DATE, uh, ICCAD, uh, all of these top conferences because I, I had uh, uh, this this funding opportunity. The second thing is this funding opportunity can be all also uh, available from your guide. So in our case, we our lab had that kind of culture that um, we should submit to these conferences and guide used to fund that. But for the, all the other people, this becomes an extremely uh, great opportunity. PMRF also encourages you to collaborate with industry, right? So if you are, uh, um, uh, if you want to in, uh, collaborate with industry, uh, there can be uh, a way by which you can uh, collaborate with them. So that's the, the second benefit. One of the things with PMRF is uh, you have to do an additional TA duty. Right, so TA is the teaching assistant duty. Generally, uh, at IIT, we have eight hours TA duty per week, which you have to do, right? It can be in the form of teaching, correcting copies, evaluating students, right? Any form, to, taking tutorials, right? Any form of them. So what happens, apart from that, um, apart from the institute TA duty, you have to uh, take one hour additional TA duty. So it is not additional, rather, seven hours of institute and one hour. And you can teach outside the institute, right? In my case, uh, for the first year, uh, I, I taught in uh, LDC College of Ahmedabad. Uh, so that was one of the opportunity I got. So a teaching experience outside the institute I got. And in the last two years, I was an NPTEL tutor. Right, so NPTEL uh, collaborates with PMRF and uh, you can be a TA in a live NPTEL course. So a course will run and uh, you can actually teach uh, or you can actually uh, take tutorials uh, in the form of, and what happens that because you are, uh, there is a compulsion that, okay, you have to upload these videos in YouTube, 
right? So your uh, digital profile is also getting created, right? So that is the third benefit. And um, if you are uh, a PMRF, so when you will uh, say apply for a, a higher position, so if you are applying for a company or if you will be applying for a postdoc position or any research position, that will actually uh, create a separate impact, right? Because this is a very, very prestigious fellowship. So yeah, there are uh, various advantages, but the amount of work uh, which you uh, have to do, right? That also uh, now it, it becomes demanding because there is an uh, annual review process, right? Which you have to uh, you, you have to go through, and um, they are very particular about it, right? So you have to have a quality work that has been done in that particular year, and there is a chance that if you don't do the quality work, the fellowship can get removed. Right, so that okay. kind of thing is also there. Right, so the the, inter, the, the process uh, is is a bit rigorous, but I think I, I covered all the benefits which uh, you get uh, in in terms of PMRF. Right? Okay, so like uh, you yourself did PhD just by luck. So now if some person is in B Tech, okay, and like he has like he he has seen that early PhD from this uh, IIT Gandhi Nagar, or he wants to do PhD any any other institute so what should be your suggestion to him like how should he decide that whether he should do phd or he, he should prepare for gate and he you can do mtech what should you be your suggestion? okay okay so okay that's a broad question right so if you want to choose between industry a master's or a phd uh, how does a btech student should uh, think or right so see for an mtech or an industry it is very clear if you want to go to industry right work uh, over there right want to explore the industrial domain getting into industry directly after btech is one option right however for semiconductor domain it's it's still a bit difficult to get into uh, what you say the semiconductor industry right after btech uh, although the, the norm has changed of over last 5 years so what people used to prefer you 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 go to an mtech uh, in top iits or iasc or top institution right get uh, the hands on on uh, all the vlsi related uh, tools and everything right enhance your knowledge and then get into industry right uh, also if you do a masters right so there is a potential uh, thing that you can uh, or you get align to maybe the research domain and you can continue phd after that right so this can also happen but after btech if you are a guy who who likes uh, what you say uh he, he, the, the person is very curious about a lot of things passionate about doing research right want to do uh something new right like, yeah explore, explore, explore yeah, basically. if you want to explore uh then the phd is one of the options you have please note that phd is not about money right so if you want to earn money i think phd is not the right option you should be deeply passionate the, the perseverance uh, that is required in phd is, is extremely huge right so um, you should be very consistent all the things which a person uh, requires to say prepare for a je for one year Right, they advance for one year. That you will require for five years continuously. Mm, right, yeah. there will be ups and downs. And I call myself PhD as a mini life, right? Because you will you will see all the phases in in the entire duration of PhD. It is a very beautiful journey, right? So uh, if you are deeply passionate about something, want to create something new, want to do research and all, then PhD is for you. Otherwise, you can uh, go to industry directly. And if you are a bit unsure about doing PhD, you can get into masters and you have both the options, right? You can get into PhD yeah. or you can get in the industry with better opportunities. Yeah, many friends like of mine, they say that we are confused, like you are confused, right? They are also confused. They don't know if this suits them or not. So they say that, let me prepare for gate. I will get into masters and from there, I will understand whether this interests me or not or whether I want to go get into the industry right now or not. Yeah, one more thing I okay. want to say actually, uh, if you, uh, in, in the BTEC itself, right, this happens at IIT Gandhi Nagar, uh, many of the students, maybe 10 to 15% of the student directly gets associated with the lab right from their second year itself. So when you get associated, mean doing projects uh, in the VLSI domain right from the second year. And if you, uh, your institute has that kind of flexibility, 
right or your institute is uh, 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 have that facility of uh, those kind of cutting edge research you should actually directly get into uh, research right from the second year because it will do two things one it will enhance your research profile the second thing that the projects which you will do will directly go into resume and if you apply for a company that will create a huge impact right so uh, you can start from the second year itself right and uh, if you can start creating the profile in this particular domain uh, down the line fourth when you are in fourth year you will have a much clearer picture in the btech itself you might not want to go to masters right you can uh, make decision in the btech itself whether you want to go to industry or you want to go to phd or you want to further enhance your skill and want to go to masters Okay, so if someone directly wants to apply for a PhD after their BTEC, so what they need to do is first build their profile, like build their resume, uh, like create a SOP, uh, and then apply to different IITs. They will like uh, I think give their links uh, forms. Uh, they have to fill up the forms and apply to different IITs, and then uh, you'll have to give interviews. And after that, you may be selected or not. That is the procedure, right? Yes, yes, that is the yeah. yeah. So and on those forms, you have to see like what uh, areas are they researching on. That also you have to shortlist by yourself. Yes. so that is uh, a okay. bit uh, necessary right so the area uh, the the basic uh, or the particular area is not important but the broad area is important so at least you should know that okay i want to go into vlsi domain right so you should not be confused between signal processing vlsi and uh, that thing <laughs> machine, machine learning, learning right AI. and in vlsi also you can have a bit of idea that okay, i want to go into digital design or analog design or uh, devices the basic device physics this kind of idea you can get after doing a uh, right right type of courses in your btech right or doing right type of projects right you will actually get an understanding okay what i want to do okay so uh, like uh, if someone wants to prepare for this pmrf scheme right so what should they like uh, keep in mind what things should they prepare to like uh, get a chance in this pmrf yeah, that's a very important question so uh, the very first thing uh, is you should have an excellent academic background okay excellent academic background so that's the first thing uh, for a pmrf that is required uh, after that uh, um, you if you have publications uh, in your btech or uh, masters right or when you ha- are in phd in the very first year itself if you have a publication that will actually give you couple of more points over there uh, and if you qualify i think gate is one of the exam right so there is i think i remember filling up the application if you qualify uh, the national level examination right with a very uh, good rank that will also uh, give the benefit uh, the the other two things which re- you require is a sop and a research proposal right uh, to have a very good sop obviously you need to have a very good profile right so you should uh, do a lot of projects do uh, internships uh, just create your uh, good profile uh, and for research proposal uh, what you have to do is you have to get into that particular domain whatever uh, research uh, you are uh, applying for you have to work Uh, on that particular topic for say one year or one and a half year and uh, you can you can write a good research proposal and uh, the research proposal should be extremely clear that okay these are the uh, the major challenges uh, you have and this you want to solve right so you should actually provide uh, that vision so if i just summarize academic profile right having publications gives you benefit qualifying national level examination gives you much benefit Uh, you should have a very good sap through internships uh, through doing a lot of good projects to having online certifications and the final thing is having a research background a research proposal if you are a btech student you can you can do research you can try to publish papers if you are a master student again you can do research if you are a phd student uh, if you have not applied for pmrf so far right and you are eligible for uh, applying uh, for pmrf you try to make sure that those one or two years which you have uh, invest time in having uh, or deciding your research because if you uh, explore that particular domain in a greater depth you can write write a very good research proposal and actually it has the highest point on that and and the last thing is you need two recommendation two excellent recommendation uh, from your faculty or whatever whoever uh, is recommending you Okay, so you need to make good connections with the uh, professors and all. Uh, if you do a good project, I think uh, that will suffice for it, right? So with that particular yeah. person, or if you are taking course with that particular person, do excellent in that particular course. Recommendation actually creates uh, uh, impact, right? 
ओके सो बियॉन्ड पी एम आर डिड यू एक्सप्लोर एनी अदर फंडिंग अपॉर्चुनिटीज फ्रॉम पी एच डी और लाइक दैट वॉज इट नो 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 दैट्स नॉट द थिंग बिकॉज आई गॉट आई थिंक पी एम आर एफ इन अगस्त ऑफ ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी टू एंड सॉरी ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी आई जॉइन पी एच डी इन जुलाई ट्वेंटी एटीन राइट सो इन दिस टू ईयर्स आई थिंक आई हैव अप्लाइड फॉर मोर देन एट और नाइन फेलोशिप्स ओके सो आई अप्लाइड फॉर गूगल फेलोशिप and the qual uh, qualcom has i think P- qualcom phd fellowship is there uh, you have facebook phd fellowships and uh, there is one more fellowship which i got uh, just before pmrf that was uh, intel phd fellowship so i was an intel phd fellow for uh, one year right so uh, you can directly work with uh, uh, intel for that particular one year in the topic which, you, which both of you are aligned with you can also go to uh, intel uh, lab to uh, do internship for 6 month that is a provision in that particular fellowship you will get additional contingency grants and all and um, apart from that uh, there are uh, many other fellowships from uh, csir i guess uh, from uh, ugc there are uh, various other fellowships which i did not apply but uh, there are a huge amount of fellowships which are uh, currently available for a phd students right okay 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 so uh, yeah that fellowship thing is done so can you just walk us through your uh, like phd journey what are the course work you took and like how you started your phd what things to keep in mind while doing a phd right those i think our viewers may want to know okay okay yeah so i think i can break down it four or five parts so as you get into phd the first thing which you have to do in my case it was uh, you have to take a lot of courses i think gandhinagar recommends taking 64 credit of courses so it is around uh, 15 to 16 courses core courses you have to do so in the very first semester i have taken uh, vlsi design um computer architecture mach- not machine learning operating system computer networks these were the courses apart from that uh, i took f- took physics of transistor which is a very important course for a vlsi uh, design engineer and there are two labs um, which is which was a part of one only so one was very log and system very log and the second one was based on tcat designing uh, devices so that was the very first semester and uh, the first semester of iit gandhinagar is the most challenging one and the hectic one right in all of these courses what happens you have a continuous assignments which will be provided and uh, all of these assignments will be uh, uh, hands on means uh, so in vlsi you have to uh, design all of those things in cadence tool all the industrial standard tools you have right in the in the tcad you have to design all of this uh, transistors uh, whatever the assignments have been provided in the centros tcad tool itself so uh, if you can uh, or uh, survive the first semester the other uh, things will become very easy right so that was the first semester uh, in the second semester i took machine learning uh, then in the second semester itself i start doing uh, i started doing a uh, couple of projects one of the projects was uh, automating the synthesis process for approximate circuit so that was one of the uh, the projects which i have done and then uh, i took other courses like computer vision uh, just to get an higher level understanding of the things and apart from that um, the other courses were um, the analog design cmos analog design is one of the very good courses iit gandhinagar uh, offer i also took couple of courses for down the line from material science these are two dimensional uh, physics of two dimensional materials these are new materials which will be used for many different uh, application which are currently being used and people are looking that can this be used to design our transistors also so uh, i covered right from material science to the machine learning the entire spectrum of courses uh, in this two two and half years of the time i got and parallelly i started uh, doing research so in the very first semester I, I, it was more of the tool design and all in the summers i i worked in this quantization and compression of machine learning uh, algorithms these are the techniques by which you can reduce the size of the models and then uh, from the third semester or onwards actually i started going more into circuit design started working in memory design and all and uh, after that i think from last uh, now, what you say right for last 3 years i've been working in in memory computing and related topics so that's how the thing progresses uh, in the phd a uh, phd uh, want to add couple of more things is um if you see in the very first one or two years you will be working with someone 
right? Uh, this generally happens. So if there is a senior PhD student in the lab, uh, you can start learning from that person. In the uh, second year to third year, right, you'll be working alone. So you are the one who is actually driving all the research. And then in the final years, uh, you will be having a lot of master's student, BTEC student, and other PhD student with you, whom you can work on, right? So it, it works in three phases, right? So you will get uh, uh, an opportunity of working with someone, right? In both manner, one at one time you are learning from somebody and at one time you are guiding somebody. Right. So this is how I think my entire PhD has uh, spanned out. And uh, yes, one more thing is I, I got this Intel fellowship, right? So because of that, I, I started working with uh, the industry. And uh, the second thing was there was a, this SRC uh, scholar or what you say SRC project which my guide had because of that uh, we got an opportunity to work directly with the industry for uh, the past three years in the in the same project which I were doing uh, my PhD in so yeah this was my PhD journey okay so basically if you are doing PhD you also get a chance to work with the industry also like there is opportunity to work with the industry also and like is there any thing like you have to submit few papers to get your phd like uh, is there any criteria about that so in general i think ugc has removed all the criteria of having papers earlier there were criteria but the thing is uh, how do you justify your phd right so uh, there are unsaid rules uh, for every different uh, institution uh, in our case you need to publish in uh, what you say right couple of papers in top conferences or journals uh, if you and the top means the top tier, the, the best ones uh, you have to publish on that. And if you have a couple of papers, three or four, you are uh, eligible to get a PhD, right? But the thing is, uh, as a PhD, you want to have a complete story, right? And because of that, uh, you 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 work on various different topics, right? And it may result into multiple multiple publications. Right. And when you feel that, OK, your story is complete, right, you uh, can go for uh, defending your PhD. Yeah. OK. So uh, like uh, you have done your PhD. So what uh, will you say, like someone who is directly going from BTEC to like a job in ARM and you have done your PhD, you have gained so much knowledge and then you're going to, to a job uh, in ARM. Right. So what is the difference you may say between like those two aspects? Okay, so uh, yeah, PA, having a PhD is a except very different experience and working in industry for five years is again a very different uh, experience, right? What PhD uh, gives you, uh, I think uh, if I just talk about the normal skills, right? So it, you, it will give you the mental toughness, which uh, uh, is very one of the very important uh, traits which is required to survive in the industry for a long run, right? Because what happens many a times, uh, you will feel extremely demotivated that, okay, what I am doing? <laughs> so is this the right decision to do PhD or not? Uh, but still you, you go through the entire cycle and you go through. The second thing is in PhD, what happens? Uh, you see, PhD is very interesting, right? So what happens? Uh, you read through the entire literature, right? You find out that, okay, there is a problem. First, you have to find out the problem. You find out there is a problem. Then you have to find out the solution, right? So you figure out the solution. Then you have to set up the entire methodology. Okay, how do you verify all of these solutions, right? And then once you have done that, what you have to do is you have to prove everything and then you have to write that in the form of paper, right? Which you have to submit in journal or the conferences, right? And then you have to make other people believe that okay, whatever the problem you have figured out, right? And whatever the solution you have found out, right? Both are correct, right? And then the paper gets published, right? So you are creating the problem and you are actually going through the entire journey. It is a very unique experience which only a PhD student gets, right? If you are in industry, this kind of experience you will get in an extremely higher level. It means that down the line, uh, 20 years, if you are uh, uh, at the uh, top management, then you are the person that, okay, you, you decide the problem and then you execute the entire journey, right? So the, the way of thinking actually completely changes when you are a PhD or you are directly working uh, in the industry for five years. Okay. So like looking ahead, like you have been at PhD and you are currently a design engineer at ARM. So what uh, like exciting research areas are like 
uh, coming in the future and what you what do you think like will be the future of semiconductor industry where we are heading okay so you might like say a few words about okay. that okay i think the first term i would like to say is uh, ai right so <laughs> you can see the nvidia stock is growing because of the ai yeah, yeah. <laughs> so the thing is um, in future um, we want to design our chips using ai right so that's the first thing and also we want to design chips for ai so that's the second thing right so using ai okay. to design chip and you are designing chips for uh, accelerating the ai application so uh, one question i have won't that kill jobs of people like us who are designing chips no not really okay. not really uh, so the thing is okay. ai is an additional tool right um, so this kind of thing actually this kind of questions came whenever a transformative technology comes right earlier when the calculator has come people are like okay all the mathematicians job will be gone it's not like that right when the internet has come people were like okay everything will be done by computers and all what we have to do but it actually creates a lot of new jobs which you have not thought earlier so that the same will happen in ai what will happen the all the redundant jobs will be gone in which you do not have to invest your uh, mind right so which is the repetitive mind, task yeah. that will be done yeah. by ai but all the creative things and all uh, still um, a person is required person will be required for that but again i am not sure of that also right because ai is now getting very creative so we will see how the how the future will pan out but that's the first uh, kind of research area the second kind of research area is uh, people are working on chiplets having a 3d integration and all all the things we are currently going to 3d means earlier uh, uh, our memories were 2d now we have 3d nan right so we have 192 layers of uh, transistors which are uh, there similarly these things uh, we have in dram also all the high bandwidth memories are 3d we are trying to go uh, our normal uh, chips also in the three dimensional domain the third thing or the third interesting research area is uh, one of the courses which i have done was uh, using two dimensional materials in uh, designing all of this uh, uh, chips right because uh, for this two dimensional material there are a lot of benefits uh, which you want to exploit like having a very high current in the very small area which you can uh, get uh, apart from that there are two things one is the in memory computing which i have worked on right so see the idea is very simple uh, we want to improve the energy efficiency of all the systems which we have and we have to figure out all the bottlenecks so memory processor transfer is one of the bottleneck we want to remove that and how do you remove that doing in memory computing or changing the computing paradigm itself right you can go to neuromorphic computing or quantum computing right so uh, from ai to this quantum computing we have a lot of research areas and i have only told you only 1% of the research area right so there are more than 99% of the other yeah. things uh, which uh, people are currently doing in uh, this particular domain yeah as you told earlier also we are exploring new materials also for uh, like creating our chips that also will like improve our chips fast exactly so uh, like uh, you have done your like you have completed your phd so if you look back uh, what you like uh, what do you think that you could have done better or different while you throughout your phd journey okay anything you could, like think well i'm actually very satisfied with my phd journey okay uh, but the thing is uh, one of the things which i have started very later in my phd i think last year itself is growing my connection and sharing the content in the linkedin right uh, which i believe that i could have done lot earlier so linkedin is a very uh, unique platform and it's a very good platform which provides you to connect with lot of people in your domain who are who are expert in that right so uh, this is one of the things which uh, i should have done uh, which is not a technical aspect rather than uh, creating network and network is very important in our community right because if you if a person knows uh, you by your work right you don't know what kind of opportunity uh, we, you will come uh, or come to you right when you complete yeah. your course so that's one of the thing and uh, i think apart from that uh, Uh, i i don't think uh, anything right so all the things which you have done collaborating with lot of people which i have done in my phd right i would suggest this thing to other people also there are multiple ways to do phd like uh, uh, you work alone dedicatedly and then uh, you you figure out some uh, what you say problem and find solution there is other way in which i have done that uh, 
you collaborate with a lot of people, means you train a lot of people, uh, which I have done in my PhD. And then uh, when you want to do a very large work, right, you will require a very huge team for that. Right? And if you, get, if you are uh, collaborating and training uh, the students who are BTEC, MTEC, and uh, just started PhD, uh, you can actually uh, do uh, such large tasks, which you might have not have thought doing uh, alone. Right? And also, you can cover more wider spectrum uh, of the domain. Right? And one another thing, because I have worked on analog design also in my PhD, right? I would have liked to explore more, but I think five years is the limited time, uh, which yeah. <laughs> you can... You can't do it all, right? You can't, you can't do, do it all. all. So, yeah. But I think a better planning can be done. Better planning can be done. Better time management can be done. These are a couple of things. And this you learn from uh, experiences, right? Having a dedicated or what you say, um, defining your task, right? And whatever the failures you are you are getting, just take a note of it, right? Such that those kind of failures should not occur again, right? And this can be anything. Failure in uh, personal level, failure in uh, tool level, failure in design academic. level, academic level, any kind of uh, thing, right? Same failures sh you should not repeat again, right? Otherwise, uh, a lot of time will be, you will be investing in that and it will, uh, what you say, the time will be gone for that, okay? Yeah, time to be waste. So, like, coming back to the LinkedIn thing, so I have seen, like, you post, uh, like, many resources, uh, about different different topics right so I, I i i'm curious like from where do you find those resources like in your college or your professors tell you that you should follow these resources or like uh, you do research yourself about those resources uh generally uh most of the so many of the things which i have learned is through the courses which i've done at iit gandhi Nagar, right so the courses are very rigorous and because i have done a wide variety of courses so the the breadth i have right and all the courses requires uh, a lot of technical depth so you can get into depth of couple of uh, things also in that right apart from that what i used to do is i i, I used to uh, read a lot right so for all the new things which are going on right and i think in one of the assignments which we got was on the moore's law uh, from professor nihar at iit gandhi nagar and because of that what happened uh, you have i i read i read all the uh, domains right which has been impacted by moore's law right and what used to happen uh, the notification used to come in my mobile every time a new things uh, is coming right and uh, in a way, it happened that, okay, um, I started reading, reading a lot, right? And in many of the topics, I started working with a lot of people, right? So whatever knowledge I'm sharing, uh, let me make it clear that this is not the knowledge of my alone, right? This is the knowledge which I've gathered uh, by working with so many, more than 60 to 70 people or teaching the courses which I have taught uh, the IC design and the VLSI design course at IIT Gandhi Nagar for last three and four years. Okay. And also one of the very important thing, uh, which uh, is the benefit of PhD, you get to travel in the conferences and you get to listen to these interesting talks over there, meet new people who are working in wide variety of domain. And from that, from them, uh, you, you get all these ideas right and whatever ideas you find in interesting you start reading on that and on on those things i i share a couple of resources on the research domain but the 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 uh, resources on this right how do you get a job uh, in the vlsi industry most of them uh, most of these courses i have done personally myself in the entire duration of phd okay all these nptl courses and everything the other courses and i have suggested all of these courses to many of our students and many i think nano dc lev now currently has close to 120 130 alumni is working in all the companies in india right so all of us are connected via a group right so they share a lot of things uh, from them so yeah the knowledge of all of these people i share in the link right okay 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 so anyone who is fresher right so he doesn't have too much time to study everything right so like what sh things should you follow in your in your uh, pro uh, like profile or post like you you post for uh, like a vast uh, demographic right so everyone wouldn't be able to follow so what 
is the session to them like from you okay. from you okay so if you are a btech student right who who has a bit in, in uh, interest in uh, electronics and all right so you should do at least 10 to 11 courses i have one of the post right so these are physics of transistors digital vlsi design digital circuits the ic design the rtl to gds flow microfabrication and then um, there were couple of courses in uh, the analog electronics cmos analog and all of this because these are the part of the curriculum also for the btech right so uh this 12 courses i think i have made a list the computer architecture is another one of the courses right you have to do all of these courses uh in a very greater detail right because this will actually cover uh, a, a broad understanding of the vlsi domain itself right so you should have a very focused list of 12 courses or 13 courses which you have and you complete it right the next thing what what you have to do is you you find out that okay which of the course you like lot right so suppose you like the digital vlsi design a lot right you take that particular course and start doing projects in that you you do a lot of projects in uh, verilog you you if you have your you have access to cadence tools and all you uh, design things right execute things figure out what kind of learnings uh, you have from them if you have uh you like the analog electronics a lot right so you design all the uh, analog circuits like band gap references right the filters the adcs and all the amplifiers right and try to get the understanding the theoretical understanding uh, the practical understanding is far more valuable than the theoretical understanding right so uh, and uh, if you do simulations and everything uh, you can verify whatever you have learned in the course is the okay whatever things you have done right those are correct or not and 99% of the time you will realize that okay there is a deviation from what you have read and what you are currently simulating right so uh, doing a lot of projects is one of the suggestion this is for all masters btech phd whatever uh, uh, the education level uh, you have right try to have a focus line of uh, courses right and try to execute a uh, uh, lot of projects in that and if you get a chance to do internship try to do internship at iits okay so this uh, this is a very unique advice i am trying to give because all that people talk about in this uh, in internship in industry right so that is that is one thing which you should do obviously but try to do uh, internship at iits all the vlsi lab which you have they are doing some good uh, research work right and the kind of exposure you will get get in those two months right that will be very valuable okay so uh, if you can uh, yeah if someone is not able to get a internship in industry so they should definitely apply for those uh, internships in iits or vlsi or they should take a call uh, yeah they, they should take a call many a times people prefer iit internship over industry right so yeah there are uh, all the b- benefits for uh, from both the cases okay like for a tst student i think anyways uh, he, he or she doesn't have an option right he can't do in internship in industries like no no co- companies really don't come so they can apply in research like uh, in iits uh, no no for phd students it's not like that people no i'm i'm not talking about phd i'm talking about tier 3 oh, like tier 3 btech students tier three. okay BTEC. like uh, they don't have the uh, like chance to intern at uh, like company so they anyways i think they should apply for like I yeah yeah, fo- yeah fo- i uh, the suggestion i have focus on your academics right so if people say that uh, the grades are not important i say that grades are grades are important okay so because that that actually clears your entry level barrier because if you send a resume the grades are the first thing people see if you don't have grades you try to have a lot of good projects uh, which is in your resume because you want to counterbalance those impact which uh, um, the for whatever reason your grades and fallen by uh, the number of projects which you have done right so for tier 3 students um, the the only suggestion i have is do lot of coursework from online resources do lot of projects which you can do via online things right verilog is one of the thing which you can do right start designing five stage pipeline processor try implementing protocols and everything these are not very big task which you can do but if you have done and if you have so five or six projects in your resume the industry or iit wherever you are applying they will appreciate your effort right and it the, the barrier or of getting into iit or industry will reduce 
ओके ओके दैट्स अ गुड सजेशन सो वी टॉक अलॉट अबाउट रिसर्च टॉक अलॉट अबाउट पी एच डी सो नाउ लेट्स टॉक अबाउट योर करेंट रोल वॉट यू आर डूइंग ओके यू कैन स्टार्ट ऑफ बाई टेलिंग हाउ यू गॉट द अपॉर्चुनिटी टू लाइक वर्क एट आर्म एंड देन यू कैन टेल एस अट अबाउट रोल एंड वट थिंग्स यू ओके ओके सो आई थिंक आई सॉ लिंक इन पोस्ट ऑफ माई मैनेजर राइट सो दैट देर इज एन अपॉर्चुनिटी इन आर्म इन मेमोरियल डिजाइन so i got uh, offers from a uh, various different range of uh, companies uh, after my phd and uh, arm was one of the company which uh, i have applied and uh, the interview process happened so i had this three rounds of interviews and uh, one of the things i want to highlight right although uh, i'm i'm applying for a design engineer position which is the j3 uh, level of position at arm uh, the, the questions were focused on the basics uh the the questions were asked on extreme basics of uh, the memory design role i was applying for that okay how does uh, this sense simplifier works or uh, if i change this particular thing what will happen this kind of niche questions which actually test test your basic level understanding right so uh, these kind of questions have been asked uh, in one round of interview the questions was were all about all my research which i have done in two of the interviews questions were more on on the basic side of it right so after that i had discussion with i think the the, the technical director and uh, i got uh, the the job offer and after that i joined arm uh, at i think uh, on 30th october this uh, last year and uh, currently i am working in uh, designing uh, memory instances so this memory instances are uh, the caches which we have in our mobile or laptop right so uh, the the srams are the memory which we design and uh, srams are the most prominent uh, memory cell which are used in all the caches okay and uh, currently i am working in most advanced technology nodes uh, in those and uh, there are a lot of challenges uh, we face over here and we are uh, we are trying to design uh, this memory instances uh, to meet a uh, particular requirement from um, whatever uh, the customers we have uh, in terms of uh, performance in terms of uh, power in terms of energy efficiency and all okay so like mainly your job role is towards the digital side only the and like they asked from the basic so in analog also they generally like starting is from the basic itself every i think mostly everywhere this happens they start from the basics and then they ask about your project and go a bit uh, more about your project so like uh, you should never forget your basics that is the most important thing i would like recommend and i think you will also recommend that first clear your basics then do projects then do everything like without clearing your basics you are if you do project that's meaningless because you are applying something which you don't even know so yeah that's the uh, like most important like tip that i also want to give so any like uh, also one more thing like you, you are in the iit right so you are like if you want to get a job after phd so you have to only go through this uh, off campus route you don't have the opportunity uh, through the on campus route is it or like you have so many connects to the professors they can also help you like give a referral or something i think okay so uh, many of the campuses has this on campus uh, placement for phd uh, however uh, because you are doing phd in particular domain and whatever the company comes you might not want to go into that particular domain right so just like what i have said i i i have worked on memory design i i did work on the entire rtl to gds flow but uh, i feel more comfortable in memory design and uh, memory design say memory design company might not come for uh, hiring the phd students so what happens during in the entire duration of P- phd you make lot of connections okay and uh, after that because you know that okay there are so many teams who are working in exactly same thing which you are uh, doing your phd on you can directly apply to them okay okay so okay. Uh, this is the route we have the so two routes you have so one is uh, via campus placement in which you might not get the job you want right because but you are eligible to sit on those companies if if company like... yeah come for phd student you are eligible to sit right so you can uh, you can many of the campuses uh, across india and very many different iits and iscs have this campus placement for phd they directly hire after or in the, in the final year you have just similar to your btech and mtech the phd placements happens right but most of the times which i have seen or many of the times that uh, you you uh 
go through your connections and you figure out which is the right particular company for your uh, uh, expertise role or your and role and profile, profile yeah. and you get into uh, that okay okay yeah that's a, like a very good discussion we had any last parting words you want to say to our viewers kailas you can say and then we can end this uh, discussion okay uh Uh, i'm not sure right so the thing is there are a lot of things uh, i am currently trying to do for all the students uh, across uh, india right so earlier what used to happen uh, most of the resources which i i used to share was exclusive for two iit gn students right now i i share this contents uh, over online um, the reason for that is because i india is growing in the semiconductor domain a lot right and many of the students doesn't have understanding uh, at what they should do right when i ha- have started my uh, btech in electronics and communication if somebody would have guided me that okay these are the courses these are the 10 or 12 courses which i am suggesting you should do right and these are the projects you should do right who knows right i would have been uh, directly after uh, btech some other places or uh, my path would have been different right but on the journey i have figured out by myself right so there are many people just like me you and there are a lot of people who are uh, trying to create content such that uh, all these students um, our major focus is tier 2 and tier 3 students right because the students who are in iit mostly they know they have this alumni connection all right so uh, i have this uh, what you say right a request from everyone just like you that if you are uh, very uh, expert in something right you you try to share this particular knowledge uh, to students if you are in industry right uh, what happens many a times um, our student doesn't know that what kind of expertise that person or he or she she should gain uh, in that particular domain to crack through the interview right so if you can share those kind of experiences and and all um the students will be more informed right they will uh, uh what you say they will do right set of projects right set of courses to get into the the vlsi industry i my have this uh, particular notion um, from last 2 3 years that i i want to uh, create a very informed vlsi community across uh, across india right um i have started do- doing this i've seen you and there are videos i think people who are currently uh, doing kudos for you guys right uh, to sharing knowledge uh, to uh, the, the the vlsi uh, community right so if you are a person who are uh, who is very interested in uh, doing uh, or getting into vlsi domain follow this all of these people uh, always do right set of question or uh, right set of courses and projects and if you, if you are not uh, uh, sure about what to do right talk with people grow your connection right you should not sit uh, in your room or in your college yeah. right and just thinking or what will happen you should expand your uh, network and you should ask a lot of questions right if you ask question then only it will get answered it's that is it is one of the very big suggestion i want to give all of you guys right so not only uh, you cannot blame your college or whatever uh, uh, institute you are coming from that okay they do, have not provided uh, the opportunity or the right set of courses and all there are so many courses online right and so many people who are sharing knowledge you can get uh, your expertise from there and there itself right so don't sit try to uh, connect with lot of people gather expertise do lot of courses lot of projects right and then you make an informed decision that okay we want to join uh, industry you want to do phd you want to do masters right so that kind of suggestion i have yeah like basically like during my time also during my my intern interview i didn't knew like i had no knowledge no idea at all because th- no one was there youtube or no one like kora has a, also was a very uh, nascent at that time for vlsi i am talking about like in software like lot of resources are there currently but slowly i think this vlsi industry is also growing you are also sharing very much knowledge and uh, slowly everyone like in youtube and every place like in through any medium any channel the knowledge about this industry is like uh, growing like awareness is growing about this industry so yeah i think like uh, the current generation and the future generation will be uh, 
much benefited from this i think yeah one last thing i want to share so if you want to get into electronics industry or semiconductor industry please trust me this is the right time the entire government is focusing so much in uh, the semiconductor yeah, so this decade will be the decade of what you says semiconductor revolution in india right so this is the right time to get into industry and um, what you say explore the opportunity like experience the growth yeah, yeah you will also grow uh, grow yes so yeah kailas thank you thank you for coming like uh, i texted to you and you just uh, accepted my request thank you for coming to our channel and we hope to see you again sure sure i hope we meet uh, in person sometime right yeah thank you for inviting me thank you